While most people are familiar with the Brabus EV12, not many people are familiar with the car that came before it. So this is a 1997 Brabus E65. And this car was built to achieve their goal of reaching 200 miles an hour in the E-Class sedan. And this was just shy of it, which is why the EV12 was created. This six and a half liter V8 made by Brabus was still very impressive for the time. This car produces almost the same horsepower as a supercharged W211 E55 in a naturally aspirated 210 sedan. This particular car has the full Brabus treatment, including the driveline, brakes, suspension, body kit, wheels, and interior. This particular Brabus E65 was featured on Motor Trend as well, which I will link in the description below. So this car started life off as a 1997 Mercedes E420, which at the time was about $50,000. And according to the article, the cost to do all these modifications was about double the car's purchase price. This car is supposedly put together by Mercedes-Benz of Beverly Hills. So let's walk through the modifications. So obviously the body kit is one of them. So this is the full Brabus body kit front. So this is the Brabus front bumper. So all this really is, is the standard E420 front bumper with this lower chin spoiler. And this particular car also has the V12 attached uh, carbon fiber lip. And that is real carbon fiber. Brabus badging. The Brabus side skirts, which appear to be it looks very similar to a facelift W210 side skirt, just painted and fully smoothed out. There are no covers for the jack holes. In 1997, this would have been just a black plastic piece that was unpainted, so this is actually very nice. And just like the front bumper, this rear bumper is basically just the standard bumper with the lower Brabus spoiler attached. And you'll see this one also comes with the full Brabus exhaust. So this is not just a muffler, it is the entire exhaust system, cats, resonator, and muffler. <laughs> retrofitted with the face of taillights, the Brabus badging which is painted, the wheels are three-piece Brabus monoblock fours and they are eight inch in the front, nine inch in the rear. So this is also the standard wheel size on the 210 E55s and this also runs the same size tire 245-40 and 275-35 and they fit very well with the Brabus suspension. This is Brabus springs and shocks. Hiding behind these wheels are 13.1 inch Brabus rotors and Brabus calipers. These are actually made by Alcon. See right there with the red Brabus lettering and it's a pretty tight fit behind these wheels, but they do look really good. So we will notice that the rotors are single piece and slotted in the front and in the back we also have the matching Brabus calipers, also made by Alcon, and also single piece blank rotors. This car is extremely low, and these are just the Brabus springs. So we got like no wheel gap in the front and no wheel gap in the back. And with the lower chin spoiler, this thing is really low to the ground. It gives a very nice stance, but you do need to be careful driving this around. So popping the hood, we will see the 6.5 liter 32 valve Brabus M119 engine. So this M119 engine only came on 96 and 97 model year W210s. So this car being an E420, that's what it started off as. You get the dual overhead cam, four valve per cylinder engine, and Brabus obviously built this engine completely. Brabus increased displacement from 4.2 to 6.5. So with that, they also did pistons and connecting rods and obviously you've modified the cylinder head as well as the ECU. If you wanna know all the specifics, please go ahead and check out the article on Motor Trend. Link is in the description. So this is rated at peak horsepower of 450 and 488 pound-feet of torque. So this is pretty impressive for a W210 that's from 97. Those are very similar numbers to a W211 E55 coming from a naturally aspirated car. So the engine is made to a 722.6 five-speed automatic from Mercedes, which I do not know if Brabus modified that, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did. 
and Brabus also has a 282 rear end, which is a standard ratio for a 210E55 as well as a 210E430. But uh, they did add a limited slip back there as well. So we'll get a nice close look at the engine. We've got red valve covers, which I personally think look great. The Brabus airbox, the plaque, badging. Got the dual intakes. This one goes all the way down. But other than that, it's actually a fairly standard E420 engine bay. Nothing too out of the ordinary. And BMW guys might recognize this. Brabus recommends Castrol 10W60. So that is a standard oil recommendation on a E60 M5. So that is the oil that is recommended for this engine as well. So being a 1997 model year E-Class, it does come with the flip key with the single button. So no smart key here. All right, so opening up the car, we are greeted with Brabus door sills. And this is the full Brabus Mastic leather interior. So really nice, soft leather. Front and back, of course, We've got our Michelin man. Has the Brabus steering wheel. This steering wheel is probably one of my favorite parts about this car. It is bolstered very well, so it is very comfortable to hold this thing. It's got bolstering up here, and as well as the sides. And you'll see this has the sport airbag, so the horns are on the side. Brabus leather shift knob. This has dual fire extinguishers mounted. These are factory fire extinguishers. Got a Nagamichi head unit. This has a full custom sound system as well. And this has the bird's eye maple wood inside of it as well. So this is from basically a W210 E55. This is that kind of like black bird's eye maple wood. We got Napa leather wrapped door handles, front and back. Leather airbag pockets. This also has metal Brabus door lock pins on all four doors. And a full black Alcantara headliner. Really nice. So we'll see on the Alcantara headliner, everything is Alcantara, even the sun visors. All the plastics are black. It's really well done. Brabus branded gas pedal, brake pedal, and parking brake pedal. And of course we got Brabus floor mat. So we got our paper mat on the top, Mercedes mat below that. And even below that we have a Brabus mat. So we gotta keep the Brabus mats protected, of course. So going into the back seat, we'll see we have the Brabus leather back here as well. Same thing with these door panels. We got the leather handles, leather pockets, wood. So even the rear headrests are covered in the Brabus Mastic leather. It is a very nice, smooth, fine leather. It's, it's actually, a, it feels softer and smoother than Napa leather. So this is a really high quality leather. And we'll see at the centers. They do that thing uh, where they kind of fold them a little bit like Mercedes did in the 90s with the 124. This has the sunshade and it has a 99 LED third brake light swap. Headline looks amazing. All this trim on the side right here is also wrapped in Alcantara. Even this little trim piece right here, which is just raw plastic. And we'll see right here, the Motor Trend Magazine article about this car. So it is dated April, 1999, Motor Trend. So here is that full printed article. This is the same article I'm gonna link. So this is just a print version. Really cool to see this stuff. And we'll see here, this car is commissioned from the OG Brabus headquarters here in Newport Beach. And we'll see the comparisons of a E420, E430, and this Brabus. So pretty impressive numbers. 
Unfortunately, by the time this car was ready for market, Mercedes already came with their supercharged E55. And obviously, why would someone spend a lot of money modifying older Benz? But this is just a really cool piece of tuner history. And Brabus is the only Mercedes tuner that is recognized in Germany as a manufacturer. So the trunk is pretty messy, but Brabus did not leave it untouched. So I wanted to show that they did add carpeting to the top layer right here, which is normally just exposed metal. And if we take a closer look, they did carpet the back there a little bit for the amplifiers and there are subwoofers. And this car also has the European Triangle. This also has the cargo nets, Brabus backpack, and there is a Brabus mat too for the floor of the trunk. So Brabus didn't even leave the trunk untouched as well. So in Germany, Brabus is officially recognized as a manufacturer, not just a tuner. So the fit and finish to this car is pretty much almost entirely on par with Mercedes-Benz and AMG. So when you get a tuner car, usually there's some minor kinks to work out. Some things are not perfect. The fit and finish isn't always how it's like when it comes from factory. But Brabus being a giant corporation like it is with all the research and development, this car is truly like a factory car. While this car did not accomplish Brabus's goal of hitting 200 miles an hour, it sure did get close at 198. It is truly a piece of Mercedes tuning history, having a very big 6.5 liter V8 in an unsuspecting family sedan. And stuff like this just doesn't exist anymore. This came out in 97, and I don't think since then Brabus has ever built a big V8 like this ever again. With the 211 E55 out, they did probably stroke those motors to 5.8 liters, but never to the level of this car. And usually by then, most cars were boosted with a supercharger or turbo. So it was mainly those type of upgrades, upgrading a supercharger or turbo. So we won't see any engine building like this ever again. So I hope you enjoyed this brief walk around on this 1997 Bravo C65. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. If you want to read more about this car, please check out that Motor Trend article linked below. And thank you for watching.